So the body really needs electrolytes to function correctly. There's all this, the nervous system, there's all these signals that have to travel from the body to the brain so that all the systems in the body know what's going on and what needs to happen. And it's really common for people to have their electrolyte levels go too low. So in this video, I'm gonna help you understand 10 common signs of electrolyte levels going too low. I think some of these are gonna freak you out. C. Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So there's a variety of issues that can cause electrolyte levels to go too low. And some of the more common things that we see are digestive malfunctions, where basically the person just doesn't have the ability to break their food down correctly. So they can't get all the minerals and nutrients out of the food that they're eating, so then the minerals in the system are gonna go low. And maybe fasting can be a problem, and, and that doesn't mean that fasting is always bad. Uh, we have a lot of videos about who should and should not be using fasting, but sometimes when minerals are low, when somebody's gonna add fasting to that, they can magnify that problem. Some people just pee out too many minerals for a variety of reasons, but they may be even supplementing with minerals and they're just kind of peeing it out as fast as they're dumping it in just because of some variables that are going on in the body. And another issue could be like keto, carnivore, or low carb diets. And that certainly doesn't mean that these are bad. I'm a fan of all of these things. And some people might say, oh, when you're eating that carnivore, you're not getting all the vegetables and minerals from those vegetables and healthy whole grains and things that are, people are confused about. But the reality is that if somebody's doing these diets correctly and they're using real food, they're probably bringing in enough nutrients, especially if they're eating nutrient-rich foods as a part of their keto, carnivore, or low-carb diet. But one of the things that causes someone to pee out too many minerals is that when insulin levels go very low, and when you're having a keto or carnivore and you're really removing a lot of those carbohydrates or even all of them, then that causes insulin to go very low. And for some people, that can cause them to pee out too many minerals. So that's why with these diets, if somebody's not supplementing with minerals, especially if they're having digestive malfunctions, now they have multiple things working against them. And they can really pee out too many minerals and not bring enough in, and it can create some trouble for those folks. Now, that doesn't happen with everybody. There's a lot of people that use these diets very successfully, and we teach people how to use them successfully, but this can be one of the causes for some of these issues that we're gonna talk about in this video. And maybe somebody's sweating too much, um, you know, sweating out all those fluids, and they're losing electrolytes that way. So there's a variety of things that can go on. These just seem to be the ones that we see most commonly. So if someone is having these issues where electrolytes are going too low, it can bring around a lot of symptoms and a lot of those symptoms can be signs that, oh, hey, maybe I need to do something about this because when the electrolytes go really low, they're gonna create some problems. So the first sign that can happen are things like dizzy spells and I'm gonna put motion sickness in there as well. And this seems to be because the minerals are very important for signals from the body to the brain and from the brain back to the body to sort of travel through. They travel through these minerals. And when there's not enough minerals there, the signals can get dropped off and they don't really travel the way they're supposed to. So one of the things that can result from that are dizzy spells or someone having motion sickness type issues like when they get in the car and they're like, hey, can you pull over? I might do some puking. So the second one is just low blood pressure. A person can look at their blood pressure and get an idea of what's going on in the body. And if your systolic number, that's that top number when you're taking your blood pressure, at least two hours after a meal but not fasted first thing in the morning is usually when you wanna look at your blood pressure. And if that top systolic number is less than 112, that can be a sign that minerals are going low in the system. Now there's other factors that make up our blood pressure, things like protein and how much sugar is in the blood and how much filth is in there. So it's not a diagnostic thing when you're looking at blood pressure, but for most people, they can get an idea. If they're like, ah, oh, my blood pressure is like 99 over 60, well, that's a low blood pressure. And that can be an indication that these electrolyte levels may be going too low. Cravings, especially sugar or carb cravings, this is a really big one. You know, the body needs these minerals for everything to function correctly, but for some systems in the body, when minerals go too low, 
if glucose or sugars are high enough, they can buffer those low minerals. And it can kind of go vice versa. If somebody has a sugar crash, but they have enough minerals, it can sometimes buffer that and they won't have any kind of symptoms that would come from that sugar crash. But for most people, they have minerals going low and then when blood sugar starts to dip, they really get these insane cravings. And they're like, oh, I'm a chocoholic and my mom always had chocolate, so it's a genetic thing and that's just my personality. But the reality is there's physiological things going on that are creating those cravings. And this is not the only cause of cravings, but for most people, it's often electrolytes going too low, so the body's like, hey, I gotta do something here. Hey, give me some of those Nilla wafers, cause I can turn that into glucose right away, and that can buffer these low minerals, and I can make everything work correctly. Go on, give me some wafers. And we see a lot with our clients when they can fix these malfunctions that are making those electrolyte levels go too low and take steps to improve those issues, those crazy cravings just go away. It's pretty fun. Uh, number four is leg or foot cramps. Like you're sleeping and you wake up and you're like, hey, somebody stuck a car battery to my leg. That's not a great time. I'm gonna jump out of the bed and freak out. So these are not a good time. And a lot of the minerals are responsible for our muscles ability to contract and relax. And so when we're talking about these minerals going low, specific minerals like you know potassium or magnesium or sodium, specific minerals going low can generate very specific symptoms. But when we're talking about most of these symptoms, we're just talking about minerals in general. So all of them going low, not necessarily a specific mineral. So we're not saying supplement with magnesium to fix these things. We're saying take steps to lift the minerals in the system so that the body can function correctly and relieve these symptoms. So with leg or foot cramps, there's often specific minerals involved, like magnesium can be important to relaxing and potassium can be involved and stuff like that. But for a lot of people, when they can just get those mineral levels up, those leg cramps or charley horse type situations can really improve. It also can have to do with where those minerals are. Some people are eating in a way or doing things in a way that can pull too much of the calcium out of the tissues and then they have a hard time relaxing. So that can be a factor. But with a lot of people, it can really be about just lifting the minerals in the system so that then the minerals can go to the right place. Uh, muscle twitches and spasm, that's a similar situation and it's just gonna show up different for different people depending on what's going on in their body. Number six is fatigue, just because you don't have enough resources in the body for everything to work correctly. So you're gonna experience some fatigue and there's lots of other causes of fatigue, but this is a common one that shows up when electrolyte levels are going too low. And digestive symptoms can be one because when we're not making enough stomach acid, then that can lead to issues like bloating or reflux or constipation or indigestion and a lot of these problems. And the body needs minerals to be able to make that hydrochloric acid, which is our stomach acid that helps us acidify our food so that we can break it down and get all the nutrients out of that food. So it's kind of weird that low electrolytes could cause digestive symptoms by restricting the body's ability to make that hydrochloric acid properly. But at the same time, if somebody's not making enough hydrochloric acid, now they can't get all the minerals out of the food that they're eating and it's kind of going chicken or egg. What happened first? I don't know. Have you ever had chicken in eggs? It's delicious. But the point of that is that either of these things can start first and create trouble with the other one. But if you have digestive symptoms, it's worth checking, oh, how are my electrolyte levels? Number eight, this kind of freaks some people out, but depression and mood issues can be caused by a lack of electrolytes. And people are gonna be like, what, nobody ever told me that. But I'll, I'll put links in the description below for some studies that kind of indicate that this is what's going on. And we see this with a lot of clients. A lot of our clients dealing with depression and even anxiety will show up with very low blood pressure and low mineral issues. And when we take steps to improve that, all of a sudden they're feeling a whole lot better. Now, there's other causes of depression and anxiety, absolutely, but with a lot of these issues, electrolytes can really be a big factor there. Nausea can come about when electrolytes go too low, and there's different theories out there about why this happens. I kind of feel like the body's just like, look, I don't have the resources to digest this food. 
digesting food takes more resources than just about anything that we do. So the body's like, just don't see anything else down here. I can't deal with it right now. So I'm going to make you feel nauseous to make sure you don't send anything down here. But this is really common to see when electrolytes go too low. And number 10 is insomnia. And this can be viewed, and I'll have a link in the description below too for this one, but this is viewed as the body kind of going into this emergency state of, hey, we, we're kind of running out of stuff. We need to use these minerals for all these things to happen and we don't have enough. Get out of bed and go do something about it. So it's the body's kind of reaction to, we're going too low, please go fix this, that kind of wakes the person up and doesn't allow them to get back to sleep. Again, lots of other causes for insomnia, but this is one that we see a lot. So most people are not going to see all of these symptoms, but any of them showing up can possibly be a sign of electrolytes going too low. And my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, kind of teaches you how to run self-tests at home using tools you can pick up at any pharmacy or health food store to get an idea of where your electrolyte levels are and maybe other imbalances that could be magnifying this problem. And the book is available on Amazon, but I'll put a link in the description below so you can get the whole thing totally for free if you want to dig into this a little bit more and understand how to look at your body chemistry to get ideas of what may be creating the problems that you're dealing with. But right now, if you want to understand how to lift those electrolyte levels and get those minerals up, jump over right now and check out our video on how to boost your mineral levels. I can't wait to hear about your results.